Hello and welcome to Business Analytics. My name is Hari Rajagopalan and I will be your instructor for this session. So we are into multiple regression and predictive analytics and really trying to figure out how to predict uh, when you have more than one independent variable. Now we come to the situation where what happens if the independent variable is categorical and not just continuous? Remember, up to this point, you've been dealing with only continuous variables and you have not been dealing with um, a categorical independent variable. So how does regression deal with them? So the way we deal with them in regression is we create binary variables, which is equal to the number of categories minus one. So if you have four categories, you create three binary variables, right? If the value of the binary variable is one, then the data belongs to that category. Otherwise, it's not. And these are mutually ex exclusive categories. So you can either have a, a something with category A or B or C, but you cannot have them A and B. So they can't have two ones at the same time. So let's take an example. Let's say the color we have four colors, red, blue, white, and black. To handle this in regression, we would create three binary variables. So four categories will be four minus one, three binary variables. So let's assume black will actually take up all the zeros. And so the three binary variables will be red, blue, and white, giving us one, zero, zero being red, zero, one, zero being blue, zero, zero, one being white and zero 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 being black and as you notice that only one of these three are one have one at any point of time so let's take an example here you are appraising a bmw convertible which is in good condition and you have the following data you're looking to see how old the car is the mileage and whether it has a t-top or not and you're going to try to predict the price based on that so here's the car and here is the data you have you have about 30 different cars with different mileages how old they are whether they have a t-top or not and here is the price so let's go ahead and take a look at this so the hypothesis here is that the age of the car the mileage and whether it has a t-top or not affects the price you will notice that the t-top there is no numbers here it's just yes and no two categories here whether it has a t-top or not null hypothesis is, is that each of these three things does not affect the price and remember this these are basically three hypotheses age affects price mileage affects price whether it has a t-top or not affects price and so you can kind of do type one and type two error and let's assume that alpha is five percent as you can see, null hypothesis says these three things do not affect price. So the first thing to do is to look at this categorical data and we've got to modify it to put some numbers. We have two categories and so two minus one is one. So we create one binary variable and that one binary variable is basically whether it has a T top or not. And we can use the Excel's if function um, is using if the cell is equal to yes, then one, otherwise zero, to get a one zero variable there. And then you can use the stepwise regression with backward elimination. And the steps are you throw in all the variables into the model. Don't worry about the intercept. Remove the variable with the remove the first variable or the highest the variable with the highest p value. Remove only one variable. Run the model again and repeat until all variables p-values are less than alpha. So let's go to Excel and do this in Excel. So the first thing we do here is to, we have to convert this into yes or no into binary variables. And we can see there are only two categories here and therefore we change this. Let's go ahead and copy this sheet uh, and I always copy the sheet because it's good to have a second copy so you, you don't mess with the original. Uh, and then you go yes, um, and you can say if 
this value is equal to this value. And this, since we're not going to change it, we can put an F4 here. Uh, um, let's go ahead and do that again. Use F4. And now you say comma. If that's true, then you want a 1. Otherwise, you want a 0. And now you can copy this all the way down. Um, now, because this needs to be um, contiguous uh, and you cannot have discontinuous, we're, I'm just going to take price here, move it here, and I'm going to take this, move this here. And the re only reason I'm doing this is so that uh, when we open up regression, all the x variables are together. Remember, they need to be get together. So uh, data, once you have this data analysis, you can click regression. Your y range is your price. There's no problem there. For x range, you're going to ignore t-top, and you're just going to kind of select this here, right? You have labels. You have confidence level. Uh, we are not going to look at the conf. And then let's go to the output range. Click OK. Um, now, yes doesn't seem to sound well. Maybe you want to put this as a t-top, uh, in which case you will then make this, you'll say this is yes, right? And then that will be the formula you're going to use uh, here. And just you can call this t-top again. And so when you run the analysis regression again, um, you will actually get t-top here. So if you look at this, let's look at our percentage values, p-values right here. Let's go ahead and format it. You can see year is um, definitely what we have to remove if we're going to do this um, as um, a backward elimination process. Uh, we're definitely going to have to remove year here. So let's copy it again. Move copy, create a copy, and we remove year from this whole thing, and we can run it again. Data, data analysis, regression. Um, this is now price here. Remember to just select these two. Do not select yes and no. Make sure you don't do that. Uh, and you can run these results all over again. And you can see here that all of them are well within. Um, your p-values are less than alpha. And so now once we've got the model, um, what I normally do is I right-click again and then uh, say this is the model, right? So that I, I, I can tell people this is the model. And then I go to data analysis regression. Um, that is the price. That's correct. And now we can check the rest and make sure everything is OK. Uh, click OK here. And so now I have the plots. You look at the normality plot. It, it is kind of a straight line. You're never going to get a, you know, um, a clean straight line. There is some non uh, linearity going on here so this is probably not normal uh, and that's probably because of the categorical variables uh, mileage might be normal but if you look at the t-top that's not normal and if you look at the residual plots here uh, some are above some are below so that's kind of nice uh, this here tends to be um, yeah kind of but it's categorical, so it's never going to be clean that like this. So it's a good idea to check the plots, check the residual plots, check the probability output, try to make sure it's at least a reasonably a clean line. And here you get your final model uh, for regression for categorical variables. And what we're trying to say is that if it's a t-top, you're going to get about $2,172 more. Um, so let's go back to Excel, I'm sorry, PowerPoint. So if you saw the example on Excel, a pretty quick example. And so now we're just going to talk about those results. So when we ran the first model with mileage, with year and T-top, um, we were able to explain about 88.3% uh, 
of the change in price due to the change of these three variables. Standard error was about $2,297. Um, and it was, the model was pretty significant. But looking at the coefficients, we could see year was not significant. And so therefore, uh, it had to go. So we were looking at increase in mileage decreases the price, increase in the number of years decreases the price. And I'm pretty sure mileage, if you look around a correlation between mileage and year, you'll probably see a strong correlation there. And T-top was a positive impact. So if you had a T-top, you would um, essentially pay more for that. So P-value is greater than alpha here. We are going to remove year. And we're going to go to the next one. And uh, now your adjusted R squared was 88.2 from last time was 88.3. So even though the adjusted R squared went down, this was the right move to do it, 88.2%. Your standard error was $2,306. Uh, and you can see all these are significant at, at alpha 5%. And so we have our final model, which says 29,577.08. Uh, essentially, um, if you if you didn't have a T top and you had zero mileage, this BMW, which is not right, of course, but here's the intercept, which is twenty nine thousand five hundred seventy seven. For every every increase, every um, uh, thousand increase in mileage, it increases by one hundred eighty two. And if it's a T top, you will get two thousand one hundred seventy two dollars more. So prediction interval, you can actually do that using your standard error, add and subtract that value to get a rough prediction interval. And here is the output and the probability output. And you can take a look at the residual plots as I talked about, um, they seem reasonable. Of course, categorical variables are not normally distributed, but that's okay. The fit plots, as you can see, as mileage increases, your price decreases. Um, and here's the normality plot, which does seem slightly curved. So uh, if you go back and look at uh, what I said about normality plots, um, and if it's slightly curved like this, there might be a slight right skew here uh, for this plot, slightly skewed right. Remember the plots I showed you, and the normality plot is like this, like a curving up. This might have a slightly right skew, and that that's you know we can still use it. Um, so here's your final model. We can essentially get a prediction interval if you want to, the upper control and lower control limit. And if you want to find the predicted price of a car, which is 10 years old, right, 10 years old, and has 100,000 miles, so 100 here, does not have a T-top, we'll of course ignore the age and we'll just focus on mileage and T-top. So we plug the equations in. Uh, this is mileage is 100 for 100,000 and T-top is zero because it's not a T-top. The price of the car would be 11,371. And so your upper control and lower control limit would need to add about 4,750 for 95% confidence interval. And so we have 95% confidence that the real price, this is the predicted price, but the real price is somewhere between 16,121 and 6,621. Now, if it does have a T-top, you're going to add that 2,172, which will change the price to 13,543. Um, so this question had only two categorical, I mean, the variable had only two categories. But what if a variable has three categories? Let's take the same example where we had... Um, prices of a house where you had the size of the house, garage, bedrooms, garage size, number of bedrooms. And then maybe whether we can look at whether it's stucco, brick or vinyl, right? So we have S for stucco, vinyl for V, and then um, B is for brick. So your hypothesis is that these four variables affect price. So size of the house affects price. Garage size affects price. Number of bedrooms affects price. And type of the siding affects price. Okay, a null hypothesis, they don't affect them. So the first thing you're going to do is to convert this. You have four, three categories. And so 
Remember, it's a number of categories minus one, so you're going to have two binary variables. So let's go to um, Excel and see how we're going to handle this. So here we have our um, data file, and as you can see, the type of siding, you have vinyl, we have stucco, and then we have brick. So that's three categories here. And we really need to figure out a way to convert this <coughs> into binary variables. And if we assume that big, the brick is your default, we can then use vinyl and stucco with zero, 01 being stucco, 10 being vinyl, and then 00 being brick, right? So that is essentially uh, what we're going to do. So step one, we convert, we use the if function to convert this to uh, when it's stucco, it's one zero. When it's brick, it's zero zero. When it's vinyl, it's zero one. And now we have all the x values here. We have all the y values here. I'm not going to do this separately because I think we've all seen how to do regression. But very quickly, um, we will use price. And then your x range is this whole thing. And then you can run the regression equation. And when you run the regression equation, you'll notice the adjusted R squared is not, you can explain 98.82% of the change in, um, in uh, price due to the change um, in size and garage, bedrooms, and then the type here. And you'll notice that you have all these p values and you're going to pick the one which has the largest p value garage 61.52 and you're going to remove it and you go to the next one and you notice that garage is removed run it again you're going to remove bedrooms right and then you run it again to get your um your actual final model and so we can say um your square feet for every uh, increase in square feet by a thousand um, the coefficient is 63.55 this is the number of units it increases by um, your stucco is about 18.15 uh, less than a brick house and vinyl is 24.98 less than a vinyl house so we can actually sit now use this for a per this model for prediction and here is the final model um, which with the probability output, uh, output and this is almost a linear one so you can kind of say this is um, normal and uh, here are the different variables which which are showing on how they look at the residual plots for square feet is both on both sides so it's most likely okay um, for binary variables you are going to see plots like this and that that's okay um, so let's go back to uh, the PowerPoint slides. So we're going to go through the same example on PowerPoint. Uh, we've already done it um, in, uh, <clears throat> in Excel. So um, don't forget to put the hypothesis and null hypothesis through. Uh, we convert the categorical variables into binary variables and because we have three categories we get two binary variables sometimes a question comes is which one should we use should we use um, uh, stucco vinyl or or brick to be the default uh, and it usually depends upon um, which uh, which one of the categories is in your opinion the default and I've kind of used brick as the default and we're going to run regression backward elimination here so we have adjusted R squared of 98.82 percent and of course the garage was p-value is the highest remember you're only removing one variable out um, so you remove garage run it again now we got only square foot bedrooms 
And in this particular case, even bedrooms is not um, as statistically significant, 46.96. So we remove that and we get our final model where everything is less than your p-value. So let's look at this. We are able to explain 98.87%. This is the standard error in terms of thousands of dollars. And here are the coefficients for that. So here is the final model. If we have brick siding, S and V are zero. So stucco reduces the price by 18,000. 149 and vinyl reduces the price by 24,983 seems a lot but this is made up data so we get sometimes we get numbers which doesn't reflect reality so if you want to predict the price of a 2000 square feet house with two car garage and three bedrooms and brick siding first you've got to kind of look at the data and make sure that 2000 falls here and we do have data which is about 2000 square feet we have data which has two car garages and three bedrooms so we can run the model and remember s and v will be zero which will give us 141,914 and but if it has a vinyl siding you're going to reduce about 24.98 from this value which will give you 116,931 and of course you should be able to create confidence prediction intervals for these and also change the predicted value if it is stucco. And with this, we finish regression with categorical variables.